Hi, Mark Randa from ADI here. If you saw the video that we created last week, it showed a completely different model that we're preparing for our tutorial series. It was also a screw conveyor like this, but it was the design was a design that was given to us by a screw designer and he had recommended that we use the SEMA standard moving forward to create the tutorial. So that's what we did. We went out and bought the SEMA 350 screw conveyor standard and started the model completely from scratch using the SEMA standard. What's in the model so far is the 300-009 trough. It's an angled U-trough is what it's called. The 300-013 end plates. Uh, some compliant bearings. And we have the uh, 300-015 U through flange bolt hole patterns standard built into it. So these bolt holes are a standard as well. Uh, there's an incredible amount of work in this. Uh, hard to believe, but there is. Um, everything is basically driven off of the screw diameter. All of the standards start with, or the majority of them start with the uh, screw diameter which goes from 6 to 24 inches and then based on the screw diameter um, you have options such as the shaft diameter and that changes the trough information as well. I'll see at, at 9 inch of screw diameter we can change the between two different shaft diameters um, there's there's a standard for all the hole the hole spacing and everything and that also changes the trough thickness um, list it can be any one of these four at a larger size a uh, quarter inch comes in there 14 I'm sure goes away so let's try a, a different diameter will go to 16 and see everything updated and now our shaft diameter can only be 3 and the trough thickness uh, yeah it added a quarter inch and if I update the mass 665 pounds and I'll zoom in here so you can see this will go to 12 gauge and that's the trough only that is changing. Let's see if we can show that. And quarter, three sixteenths. The end plates have a specific thickness um, based on the screw diameter. Can't change that. So if we go to 18, There we go, and uh, now we have the option of 3 and 7 sixteenths. Okay, what else do we, oh, the end plates here. Right now it's, it's set to the bolted option, which is also a SEMA standard. Just has holes, and then if we change that to studded, the holes go away, and we have studs on there. Uh, we'll show it here. So that's what your plate would look like. I'll weld this stuff at some point, but get to that later. Okay, and then we have the different types of, of metals. Um, these are all in the standard as well. And then they're based on uh, Autodesk Inventor 2. Uh, these are actual Autodesk Inventor materials. 
So we have a trough material and a and, uh, cover plate material. And if I change them both to aluminum and update the mass, I have 283 pounds. And then change them to stainless steel and update the mass, 681 pounds. So big difference. Got studs here too. I got to add the nuts on there and all the bolts and miscellaneous other hardware. Okay, so if we change the studded back to bolted, you can see the studs disappeared and there's now just bolt holes. Again, there'll be bolts in there. The, the length of the unit is based on the standard as well. At the two small sizes it's 10 feet, at all the other sizes it's 12 feet. So let me go up to, we'll go up to the largest size. At this size there's only one shaft diameter so there's no choice. You have three, choice of three different um, trough thicknesses. Um, these all these uh, remain the same. These are whether you want it bolted or studded. Oh, with feet or without. Let's see what it looks like with feet. So there's there's with feet. This is also to the standard. And we can do it with feet studded. And open that up. Okay, we'll change that back to bolted. And all of this stuff, as soon as as soon as it happens in the model, the the bill of materials is automatically updated and correct. At some point in the tutorial, I'll I'll link this with an ERP system, and uh, make it so that you get pricing right here on the form as you do it. Real-time pricing. Pulling pulling the pricing right from the ERP system. That'll be pretty sweet. Okay, and I think the last thing here is the number of sections. This isn't a standard. Um, it's just something that you would do. I, I have it limited to eight right now for testing, but it doesn't matter what this number is. And there you have it. When the, when the model's complete, there'll be nuts and bolts in all of the holes and that will be reflected in the bomb and all of that information will be available right here on your form as well as in the bomb. Um, so you can do pretty much instant bidding with something like this. Um, I don't know if anybody would have a use for that, but again, this is a tutorial, so you'll be able to take what you learn here and apply it to your own models for your own company. Uh, I'll just go over what uh, what's going to be coming, or what's in here now and what's coming. Right now we have the, the 009 angle U trough. The 013 U-Troth end plates and the 015 U-Troth flange bolt hole pattern standards included in this model. And coming in the next video and next model shown, we'll have the 22M nuts and bolts standard, the 011 discharge spout, the 023 flanged cover, the 024 semi-flanged cover, the 025 flat cover, and the 032 inlet spout standards reflected in the model. After that we'll go into the screw itself and then this model will be connected to probably a bin. We'll have a separate tutorial for creating the bin. 
we plan on doing a tutorial for the SEMA conveyor standard as well. So we'll, we'll connect all the different models into a big Rube Goldberg factory at some point. It should be pretty interesting. Head on over to Applied Design Intelligence if you're not there now and check out the progress on this tutorial. Uh, we'll be offering it to the public right around the end of the year, so stay tuned and try to take the tutorial. It should be a blast and you'll learn a lot. Thanks for watching. This is Mark at Applied Design Intelligence. Thank you.